Quick update on the reel here. Um, coupler is fine, working great. We haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. Need to get a little paint on it. It went on and we went fishing the next day, so. We'll, we'll splash a little paint on that before long here. And uh, I know a lot of people are kind of curious about how the system works. We usually don't uh, really talk about it much, so I'll give just give you the quick rundown here. Um, this reel is hydraulically driven. This is the motor right here. These are the hydraulic hoses that go to some valving here. And then all of this comes back down to the stern to our hauling station and our hydraulic valve down there. This is a big gearbox right here that engages it. So right now it's engaged, it won't move. This lever right here just controls the coupling inside, it's blind. And so there's a gear on the hydraulic motor about right in here and then another gear in here. And it's just a, a coupling that slides back and forth on a fork that's uh, connected to this right here. So you just push this in to engage it. Now it's engaged to the motor. And then you pull it out to freewheel it. So it's a very simple system. Um, so small gear, small gear here going to larger gear here, which increases the torque and lowers the speed so it doesn't spin too fast. And uh, just a really robust design, really good setup. Um, our hoses come into here. They go into the slow valve, which we can adjust the speed of our level wind right here. We don't have to touch any of this stuff ever. Uh, we have it set where it works really good and gives us a pretty level wind on the, on the drum there. Keeps the line from stacking up on one side or the other. So you can see that it's, it's pretty, pretty even. And uh, it's just a nice, simple design like that. We also have a valve right here. This is a cutoff valve. If we have an emergency or something, you could just reach over here and turn off the hydraulics just like that. That just cuts the flow of oil to the motor. It'll stop the drum. It's the same thing as over there. Just up here, so if a guy got, I don't know, somehow tangled up in the line or, or caught by a hook and you're getting pulled up to the reel, you could probably reach over here and, and grab that real quick and stop it. Um, same thing with somebody working over here at the table. They can either literally just take a couple of quick steps and reach over here and stop that. So just kind of a good safety design there. We also have steering and throttle control on the stern right here. So we can turn the boat with our jog stick here. And this is the throttle. It's, uh, you just activate it with, uh, with a little button on the side. You just push that to, to switch steering stations. Same thing with the steering right here. You just push right there and that, uh, that switches control over to the back. Um, we're, just, uh, we're just on autopilot right now. If you're wondering, I'm driving, but not driving. Small enough boat that I can just peer up the front right here and see if anything's in the way. Got our buoys tied in over here. These bear are, are ADF and G numbers, which is Alaska Department Fish and Game. Every vessel that fishes commercially in Alaska tenders or transports fish for others has to have an ADF and G number. That number stays with the vessel for its lifetime. It doesn't transfer in between individuals. It's also branded into this buoy right here that we use as a trailer. All the buoys on board have to have a number on them, the ADF and G number, if you're fishing halibut. So if you have any unmarked buoys, you could get a fine. Every year when you uh, renew your permits and your vessel license, they'll give you a new placard and uh, up forward here on the port side is where you display your vessel license. It's just a, it's a metal plate. Once again, this stays with the vessel for the life of it. Every year, 
You get a new triangle up here to put on. It's got your AD, F and G number printed on it. This aluminum tag has it embossed in there. And, uh, and they'll update the number right here. Every year it's a new color. This year it's yellow. Last year it was kind of a teal blue. So they'll change the color every year. Oh, lost my hat. Yeah, so they'll change that color every year. And, uh, and also all the permit cards that you have will, will have the same color is your vessel license for that year. So that just makes it easy for enforcement to look at it and, and know that you have the, the correct uh, vessel license and also permit license. So that's kind of the rundown on that. Um, a little bit just on how the licensing works. Um, CFEC, which is Commercial Fisheries Entry Commission, uh, regulates the vessel licensing and also permits. They issue the permits every year. There's different fees for different fisheries, different gear types, different vessel sizes. Um, it's all just different. Some of them have slid sliding scales based on how much fish you harvest in a year. Like for halibut, for instance, if we harvest less than 8,000 pounds for the prior year, this permit is $75. If we harvest over 8,000 pounds, they bump it up to $400. So basically, larger vessels that harvest a lot more, are uh, they'll pay a higher permit fee. And uh, that's also the same in some fisheries that have different vessel size limits by license. Like uh, Tanner Crab, for instance, has uh, permits for under 60 feet and over 60 feet. So sometimes there'll be a difference in the vessel, uh, not the vessel license fee, but the permit license fee. Um, there's also a difference in the permit fee for the vessels. Our vessel is $60 to license for the year. Um, under 24 feet, I think, so like a skiff. I think that's right. It's like a... It, I think it's $24 for those. And I don't know what the upper end of it is. I, I think it's like over 58 or over 60 foot. It's, um, you pay a little bit more. It's not a whole lot for the, for the vessel license, but uh, some of the permits can get pretty pretty expensive depending on, on the fisheries you're involved in and the value of the fisheries. They base those permit fees on the value of the fishery. So yeah. Um, just kind of wanted to, to share a little bit of that with you guys. Um, I know people are kind of curious about that. So, so these permits are just an annual permit to harvest whatever species. It doesn't necessarily give you the right to. So if we're talking about, for instance, uh, salmon saning in Kodiak with the purse sane, you have to get a permit every year, which I believe is also $75. But you also have to own the limited entry permit. And those are running right in the range of about $45,000 right now. Once you purchase that permit, it's yours, unless you lose it. Um, for whatever reason, for fishing illegally or the, the state can the state can take that permit back, basically, but they rarely do, only under extremely rare circumstances. Um, other fisheries are what are called open access, so like our, our rockfish and our cod fisheries here for jig gear, those are open access. Um, they're not limited entry, so all you need to do is just buy your, your permit from CFEC every year, and it's like 75 bucks and you can go out and harvest cod or rockfish in, in this management area. Um, halibut IFQs, those are privately owned, right to harvest that resource. It's gotten expensive this year, the X-Vessel price is up, and so usually 
the uh, the rights to fish it kind of mirror that and go up. So right now it's about fifty dollars a pound to to buy. It's pretty expensive. Um, and uh, once again, you know, you have to annually renew your, your permit. But, but once you buy the harvest right, they're, they're yours. Unless you lose them through some kind of legal action or, I don't know, foreclosure if you have them financed or anything like that. So, Anyways, we're getting pretty close here. Looks like we're just going to kind of set right here on this edge going back to the southeast. I guess we're pretty much there. We'll probably have Matt start trailing the, the buoy here in a minute and toss out the bird line. So that's another thing people have asked about is that line that's dangling off of our mast and streaming back. It's got orange streamers hanging off of it. That's to try and uh, prevent birds from grabbing your bait as it's going down. And uh, not so much stealing the bait off your hook, but actually getting hooked and drug under and drowning. Um, Short-tailed albatross are protected and if there's more than two that are incidentally caught per year in Alaska, it can shut down our, our longline fisheries up here. So cod, halibut, sable fish, it can affect all of those. We don't see them too often here. We, we do see uh, albatross, but we usually don't see too many short-tailed. They are around here, but further offshore, you encounter them a lot more. So that's just a requirement they put in place, gosh, over a decade ago, I want to say. Probably actually more like 15 or 16 years ago. And uh, it just helps prevent uh, incidental take of those species and then also just other ones. There's not too many here right now, but they'll gather up as we start to set. And uh, it seems like further offshore, you'll get hundreds of birds that are out there diving on your gear so that just kind of helps uh, keep those guys away from it so yeah we'll get uh, situated here and uh, start dumping some gear in the water 